in terms of strengthening our home ownership program. Uh, this has always been the hallmark of our public housing system, and we must and will continue to strengthen this key pillar of our social compact. Our focus is to help young couples own their first flat. So our pledge to young Singaporean couples is that they will always, we will always keep new BTO prices stable and affordable for them. And that's why we enhanced our housing grants last year. And since then, many more home buyers have benefited. One such couple is Mr. Si Cheng Long and his fiance, Ms. Felicia Po. They booked a three-room flat in Bukit Batok in the BTO exercise last November. They were eligible for $60,000 in housing grants, and so they were able to buy the flat for less than $140,000. This meant that the mortgage loan was completely paid for, or will be completely paid for using their CPF. There is no need for any cash outlay, and so they end up with more savings. And I hope this gives them confidence to plan for the next step, to get married, and hopefully to start a family soon. Our housing subsidies are rightly focused on the lower and middle income households, but we've not neglected those in the higher income groups as well. Last year, we increased the income ceiling to enable more households at the higher end to buy a subsidized flat. Uh, Mr. Gantiampo suggested that we do away with the income ceiling altogether. I appreciate his intent to allow all Singaporeans to buy a HDB flat, and that's something we would like to do so as well. So we want to move in this direction, and that's why the income ceiling has been progressively moved up over time. Uh, but we have to calibrate these moves. Firstly, because there are fiscal constraints to manage. And secondly, having just made a move last year, we will need time for the increased new demand to flow through the system without adversely affecting the interests of the rest who are already in the queue. At the same time, I want to assure Mr. Gunn that we will continue to take steps to ensure that executive condominiums remain affordable. We already do so through various measures, and that's why ECs today are more affordable than comparable private properties. And indeed, if you look back over the past few quarters, EC prices have remained relatively stable. And so we will continue to monitor and take necessary action if needed. Uh, besides housing grants, we have also shortened the queues considerably for first-timers. One measure of this is the application rate of first-timer families for new BTO flats in non-mature estates. It's an indicator which we monitor very carefully. And this has remained stable at about 1.6 last year. In practical terms, in practice, it means that most will be able to select their new BTO flat within their first or second ap application and definitely on their third try. I understand members who have shared concerns about newlywed couples who, are re who have rep repeatedly applied for a HDB flat without success. And I've heard similar experiences during my Meet the People sessions. In fact, one couple told me at MPS that they had applied more than five times. So I asked for the details. I went back to HDB and asked for a check. And I found out that they were, in fact, interested in flats near the city centre. And so all their applications were for flats in mature estates around the city centre, for example, in Anmokyo and Topayo. Now, I've already announced that HDB will offer more flats in mature estates this year. For example, we have new projects in Bidadari and Tampanese North. But there is a physical limit to how much more we can build in these already developed areas. So I would encourage first-timer couples to consider applying for flats in non-mature estates. As I mentioned earlier, if you look at the application rates, there's a very high chance of them getting it within their first, second try, definitely within their third try. And the flats there in these non-mature estates are also more affordable. And then while waiting for the flats to be completed, they can consider renting a flat under the Parenthood Provisional Housing Scheme, or the PPHS. I recognize that some want a flat more urgently, and or would prefer specific locations for good and practical reasons, for example, to live near their parents. And in the current market, they can consider buying a resale flat. Resale prices have moderated, and they are more affordable now. For example, you can compare HDB resale prices against household in income. At one time, prices were rising faster than income, but this is no longer the case. Between 
the last property market trough in 2009 and 2015, HDB resale prices increased by 35%. But house, median household income increased by a higher 44%. So housing affordability has improved, and there are many attractive options available in the resale market. In addition, we introduced the Proximity Housing Grant, which helps families who wish to live near or with, or with their parents or married child to buy a resale flat. So this means that a young couple can enjoy up to $90,000 in housing grants to buy their first home from the resale market. $30,000 through the CPF housing grant, up to $40,000 in additional CPF housing grant, and the $20,000 in the proximity grant. Uh, Ms. Shower Chan asked if we can do more to help young married couples get their flats early and live nearer to their parents. I share her desire to do so, and we will continue to study ways to help them further. We've also managed to reduce the queue for second-timer families, and they too can benefit from the proximity grant. And here I'd like to share the experience of one couple, Madam Norliza Binti Roslan and Mr. Yulandi bin Abu Bakr. They bought their first flat, which was a four-room flat at Taman Jurong from HDB. Then as their family grew, Norliza wanted to move out and move closer to her parents who are living in Bukit Batok so that they can help look after the children. They looked at several housing options and eventually they managed to find a four-room resale flat in Bukit Batok on the same floor, just down the corridor from her parents' place. And so with the proximity grant, they were able to buy the flat for about 324000 resale flat. This is, in fact, comparable to what they would have had to pay for a new four-room flat from HDB as second-timers. So, in fact, they are better off by going to the resale market. The amount they pay is about the same as BTO after grants, and they get a flat closer to their parents, and they get to move in earlier as well. So for both first-timers and second-timers, the softening of the property market and the introduction of the new proximity grant, enhancements of our, all the various grants that we've had, means that there are many more attractive options to consider for purchasing a home. Likewise, there are also more housing options for singles. Uh, in 2013, we made a significant policy shift to allow first-timer singles to buy a new two-room flat from HDB. Engineer Dr. Lee Biwa asked about this, and I'd like to assure her that we have launched more two-room flats to meet this increased de or this new demand from singles. Uh, we have also increased the quota for singles from 30% to 50% last year. As a result, the BTO application rates among singles has been steadily improving. It started out very high, over 30, when we made the move in 2013. It's come down to 8.5 last year, and it was 7.7 .7 in the most recent BTO exercise. I intend to bring down this application rate further. It will take time, but we will make it happen. Uh, the move to open new flats to singles is a significant one, and it has met with a strong demand surge. So we will need some time to clear the bulk of this demand, but we will bring down the application rate. 